Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the most powerful Android tablet that I've had the chance to mess with on the channel. Now that's as making this video, because in the future, we will get more powerful tablets. But as it sits right now, when it comes to raw power, this actually does beat out the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 and the S7 Plus, because this new Lenovo 11.5 inch tablet is powered by the Snapdragon 870. Globally, this tablet is known as the 2021 Lenovo P11. 11 Pro, and it's definitely a spec upgrade from the 2020 version. I actually took a look at that. It was using the Snapdragon 720. And for what it was, it's not a bad tablet, but this is definitely a nice spec upgrade given that they've thrown in the Snapdragon 870. And that's not the only upgrade they've added here. When it comes to the storage, it's using UFS 3.1, so it's much faster. It has 128 gigabytes of internal storage, plus we can add a micro SD card up to one terabyte. And the screen is actually a 90 hertz OLED at 2560 by 1600. On my channel, I take a look at a lot of these Android tablets, and Samsung has really hit it out of the park with their Samsung Galaxy S6, S7, and S7 Plus. We have a full aluminum frame, and this definitely feels on par with these Samsung Galaxy tabs. I mean, build quality on this thing is great, and we should get better performance than the S7 Plus, because that was rocking the 865 Plus, this has the upgraded version, which is the 870, and in my experience, it does perform a bit better. So inside of the box, you're also going to receive a 20 watt charger and a USB type C cable. Plus we have our user manual, but that's about it for the unboxing. Taking a look around the tablet, this does have quad speakers. So we have two on each side and they're tuned by JBL. We also have our power button to the far left, which also acts as a fingerprint reader and our micro SD card tray. Taking a look at the bottom here, there's not much going on, but it does have these four pogo pins, which will allow you to attach their optional keyboard, which unfortunately I don't have in my possession at the time of making this video. Our two other speakers over here, plus our USB Type-C port, and this does do display over USB Type-C, so we can plug this into a bigger screen. And finally, up top here, we have our volume buttons. And like I mentioned, this is a full aluminum frame, so the back here is aluminum, and it actually looks really good. I think they've done an amazing job with this thing. When it comes to the specs for that CPU, we have the Snapdragon 870, which should definitely offer a big upgrade over last year's model, given that it had the 720. Six gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, an 11.5 inch OLED display at 90 hertz with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. The screen on this thing also supports Dolby Vision and HDR10, plus it has a maximum brightness of 600 nits. 128 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage, plus micro SD card support. Quad speakers tuned by JBL, Bluetooth 5.1, Wi-Fi 6, and it's running Android 11. So far, everything's been really smooth with the UI, and I expected it would be with that Snapdragon 870. If you notice any kind of uh, banding on the tablet screen, it's just because my camera's not synced with the frame rate of the screen itself. Uh, you don't see this with your naked eye at 60 or 90 hertz. One of the major reasons I love the Samsung Galaxy Tab line is because it has DeX built in, and if you're not familiar with DeX, basically it turns your Android tablet into kind of a desktop. Changes the look of the operating system and just makes it more mouse and keyboard friendly. Well, Lenovo has kind of added something very similar to this tablet here called PC Mode, and as you can see, it's more of a Windows-style or a Linux-style desktop experience. I will go over this just a little bit in this video, but I kind of want to make a dedicated video because there's a lot to it. And since this does support display over HDMI, plugging this into a bigger monitor or a bigger TV really helps out. We have access to Google Play. Everything loads up really fast with that Wi-Fi 6 built in. And when it comes to Widevine, uh, this does support level one. And if you're not familiar with Widevine, basically if it doesn't have the certification, you can't get like HD Netflix, HBO Max, Hulu, Amazon Prime. But this is certified level one, so when it comes to HD content through Netflix and your other favorite streaming apps, this will do it just fine. So one of the first things I always do when I get a new device is run a few benchmarks, so let's go over those real quick. First up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 983, multi, 3236, looking really good here. Next on the list, we have 3 Mark Wildlife, this is a Vulcan benchmark for the built-in GPU. We got a 4,311. And finally, Antutu with a 714,141. So for a tablet, this is definitely benchmarking really high on all fronts. GPU, CPU, RAM, and storage. When it comes to video playback or media consumption, this tablet is excellent. We do have that wide vine so we can get HD and everything we want, but I did want to test out YouTube real quick. And with this new version of YouTube, you can go up to 4K HDR. 
This is only a 2.5K screen, but I'm still going to play it in 4K. And these speakers do sound absolutely amazing. They actually have some really good bass to them. So yeah, it'll handle video really well. And if you just wanted to like stream from your Plex server or something like that, or even just throw some movies on a micro SD card, it'll work out just fine. Moving over to some native Android gaming. First up, Genshin Impact. This is one of the harder ones to run. I'm at medium settings, 60 FPS, and the Snapdragon 870 can definitely handle this game. If you've ever tried this game out on lower end devices, you know how demanding it can really be. And even on the Snapdragon 888, I can't max this game out. I usually have a mix of kind of high and medium. Moving over to Call of Duty Mobile, now this game is actually very well optimized for a ton of different chipsets, but here we're at high settings with the maximum frame rate, and as you can see, performance is excellent. And keep in mind, this game here, Call of Duty Mobile, does support controllers, so if you wanted to connect a controller to this tablet and play it like that, you'll have no issues. And the final native Android game I wanted to test here was just Rebel Racing. I wanted to throw at least one racing game in here. I usually test Real Racing 3, but I know it's going to run fine on this device. Uh, when it comes to Android gaming on the Snapdragon 870, it's going to handle anything that you can get from Google Play. You want to do PUBG? No problem. And as you saw, Genshin Impact runs awesome also. But now, I want to move over to a little bit of emulation. That's one of my favorite parts about these tablets. First up, a little bit of Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator, upscaled to 1920 by 1440. This is Daytona USA. It's running great here. FPS is up in the top left-hand corner of the screen. I am using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth, and it just paired right up. PSP is another one that's going to run really well. Here we have the standalone version of PPSSPP with a Vulcan backend, 3x Ghost of Sparta, running at 60 FPS. This is a very demanding game, and we're at 60 with this one. I also wanted to test out a little bit of 3DS. I'm using Citra MMJ. You can get this from GitHub. This is not the version from Google Play. In my experience, this one does work better, and it's running great here with Mario Kart 7. And finally, at least for this video, we have some GameCube and Wii emulation using the Dolphin emulator, Vulcan backend, upscaled to 720p. I have tested the Snapdragon 870 in different phones in the past, and I've always had really good luck with GameCube and Wii emulation. I got one more here to test for GameCube, and then we'll move over to a Wii game. Still at 720p with that Vulcan back in, and even when you do the special moves, there's tons of effects with this game here. It's running at 60. So we are getting amazing performance with GameCube and Wii on this tablet. So we talked a little bit about display over USB Type-C, and here I just have a simple USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. It also has a couple USB ports on it. Plug it right in to your favorite TV or monitor, and it'll show up. Now, in my opinion, this is where PC mode is going to come in really handy. It's definitely not as polished as something like Samsung DeX. It does need a little bit of work, but overall, I think they've done a great job for a first iteration of this. Now, since the tablet and this monitor are running different aspect ratio screens, you can see we have a black border on the side. Hopefully, this is fixed in updates down the road. But basically, the way this works is it kind of turns Android into a desktop-friendly operating system. We have free-floating windows. We can open up multiple apps at the same time. You want YouTube, a browser, and a game? It can be done here. 
And uh, along with this, I also have my Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. So if I did want to play a game while I got a video running, I can go ahead and do that. Let's uh, get this situated. Grab my controller here. And I can start playing some PSP games while I'm watching a video in the background and browsing the web. So yeah, I've always been a big fan of, let's say, PC mode when it comes to Android devices. I think Samsung is doing it the best with DeX right now, but this does look very, very promising. And hopefully, with some updates, they can clean all this up. So overall, the 2021 Lenovo P11 Pro is a great tablet. It's a very powerful tablet when it comes to Android tablets. As you know, there are cheaper ones on the market, but they kind of fall short by screen, performance, battery life. And speaking of battery life, this does have an 8600 milliamp hour battery. And at 90 hertz, you can get around 9 hours of screen on time. That's running a looping benchmark. At 60 hertz, I'd say around 12 hours, which is more than enough for a tablet like this. Unfortunately, it only comes with a 20 watt charger, so it will take some time to charge this thing back up, but I think 9 hours is great, especially with this 90 hertz display. But in the end, we're getting great performance out of the Snapdragon 870, awesome battery life, and the screen on this is really, really nice. Personally, I do prefer the Samsung AMOLED displays, but this OLED at 90 hertz does look really good, especially with that 600 nits of brightness. So yeah, that's going to wrap this one up. If you're interested in learning more about this, I will leave a few links in the description. This will be coming to the U.S. very soon, so definitely keep an eye out. But if you did want to order one right now, you can order it from overseas and have it shipped here. It's really up to you. If there's anything else at all you want to see running on this tablet, or if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. I do plan on making one more video with this. I kind of want to go over PC mode a little more because there's a lot more to it than I showed you in this video. But I kind of wanted to wait for an update so we could get that external 16x9 display fully filled out. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.